Hello everyone, welcome. Today we are going to see control flow in Python. So what are the control flows in Python? So we'll see that uh, inside the control flow there are two things comes that is first the conditional statements and then the loops. So first we'll start with the conditional statement and in conditional statement we'll see the if statement. So for seeing the if statement we'll first uh, we have to first write the keyword if then we'll see that if 5 is smaller than 10 then print Five is below ten. If I'll execute the code, then this condition is true. That's why this line is getting executed. This print function is getting executed, and it, it's getting printed here. Five is below ten. So I hope you have understand. And if I'll change smaller than to greater than, and if I'll run the code, then you'll see that the code has been run, but the condition is not true so nothing has been printed so the if statement is used when we have to only check for the true so for example when we are seeing only this means when we have to only check for true value then we use only if and then you can see the code the print function has been executed now there is if else now what is else and why it is used so else is basically a default uh, statement that is used in uh, conditional statements and why it is used because if the condition if the upper conditions are false are not true then the else condition will definitely execute so if you want to uh, show something uh, default so you have to use the else statement so i'll show you how it's work i'll first you i'll show you when it is smaller than it is uh, then condition is satisfying now when i'll do it greater than if 5 is greater than 10 then condition will not satisfying it is false and then it is executing nothing now if we want to execute a default value then what we'll do we'll just simply use the keyword else then followed by the colon and then we'll print a default statement that is number is less than 10 so now if we we'll execute this we'll see that we know that this condition is false but here the else condition is getting executed as it is a default statement so number is less than 10 has been printed now here we have seen the if why you use the if now you have now we have seen that why you we use else now what about the else if so else if is used when we have to check for multiple conditions so when we have to check for multiple conditions we uh, use else if now here we are checking for only one condition if we are using only if then we are checking for uh, a single condition and then if you want to check for another thing then we have to write if then we'll do so this is uh this will be very time taking and it will be uh time taking for you as well as for the system to interpret it as you are using multiple conditional statements and if you'll we'll use elf if first i do here that I'll declare x equal to 10. Now I'll do that x equal to equal to 5. If x is equal to equal to 5, then print that x is found using the if. Using the if now in else, if I'll give x equal to 10 
and then I'll print that x is found using the else if now now what will happen if I'll execute the code you'll see that x is found using the else if it has been printed as it is checking for first condition that is x is equal to 5 but here x is initialized uh, the value of x has been initialized to 10 now the second condition is checking for x is equal to 10 so it is satisfied it is true that's why it is getting printed now if it is the value of this i'll put to 9 now the else will be get printed wait i'll change the statement of and if I execute the code match not found has been printed because this is the default value now what if i'll give one more else if and then i'll give this else if equal to 10 now if we'll print we'll see that x is found using second else if has been printed as first two were false and then the third else if means third time it's check for the condition and then it satisfies it gets true then it gets printed or else if it if this condition was also false then this else one will definitely get executed so i hope you have understand the conditional statements now we'll go to the loops so we'll see here first while loop so for while loop first we'll declare first we'll initialize the value of the variable i then we'll simply use the keyword while and then we give the conditions so here we want to print the uh, alphabet from 1 to 5 so what we'll do so we'll simply do while i is smaller than equal to uh, 5 so print simply i now if i'll run the code Oh, I have given error greater than I have to give it smaller than. So if I'll run the code, you'll see it it went to infinite loop. Means this loop will not end. This will go further. This will go on and on and go. And your system will get corrupt or your system will get hanged or get stopped. So I'll interrupt this. And when I'll interrupt, then you can see our error has been occurred. Keyboard interrupt. I'll clear this for better experience. Now why that happened because we didn't give the step so for that we'll give the step here that's now this means that i equal to i plus one uh, it is written in short format i you have seen the operator video so we'll, you will understand that why i have written in this that what is this shortcut means now now if you'll execute the code we'll see that one to five the numbers have been printed so it was very easy now we'll see the nested while loops that how to use the nested while loops so for that we'll do that we'll simply write here python then we'll give colon and then we'll take one more for the nested while loop we'll declare j to one and then we'll use the while loop and then we'll do j smaller than equal to 5 then print we want to print coding now we'll increment it with 1 now when we'll print it we'll see that each time a python is printing then five coding get printed as you will see five coding is getting printed and then again a python is getting printed then each time five pythons will be printed and then after one python five coding will get printed 
then again one python will get print for five times and then five codings will get print for each python now these are coming uh, in vertical way if we want to make it in horizontal then we'll do what we'll simply now if i we are getting an error because we didn't concatenate it we just simply give the end so we have to uh, concatenate it first so using the comma operator and now if you see then and you can see all these are getting printed in horizontal way now we want a line after each python means one python is getting printed then after that 10 coding uh, five coding will get printed then we want a new line for that what we'll do for that after this one python is getting incremented means it will perform for first it will perform for the python then it will enter in the nested loop for coding then five coding will be printed then it will perform the incrementation then it will come out of the loop and uh, it will perform an incremation for the next python so after doing that it will go to the new new line for that i have given a i am using a print function and now if i'll run the code you can see here python then after that five codings then again one python then five codings and then five pythons and for each python five coding has been printed so now we'll move to the for loop so for using the for loop we'll simply give the we'll use the for keyword and then we'll give so for is basically used for sequences sequences that present uh for sequence what we are going to uh what comes in our mind mind uh list tuple sets so for performs for the list tuple sets for the sequences present inside uh, the list the elements presence inside the list for that it is used so here we'll see so first we have to we'll declare a list here so we'll take a list that is for uh for we'll write for python coding then we'll take another number we'll for example take 65 then we'll take 78 then we'll take 89 now our list has been completed now we'll do what we'll use the for then we'll declare i for the each element present in x and now we'll print that i in x and now we will simply print the i means we'll simply print the elements so for each time for each element the i will be printed so you can see here for each element in x the i is getting printed so for first one the python coding then 65 then 78 then 89 is getting printed now now what we can do uh now we'll do what we'll see uh if you want to give a list we'll not give the list here we'll directly give the list here we can also do that so we can give two four five six then we'll can give 7.89 and if we'll run the code then you'll see then also it is getting uh executed because it is doing that this i is checking that for i in this list for each element in this present list the i will get printed and you can see and using the for loop you can print numbers also using the range function i'll show you how as we'll give range here then uh before you use the range function i want to tell you something about range function range function takes three parameters first where to start from second and its default value of starting is zero if you'll not give anything it will start from zero so first it takes where to start from second it takes where to stop and it is uh excluded means if we want to print till 10 then we have to give 11 because 10 is not included because it is printing from zero so it will take uh, 10 uh, it will take 10 value from zero so it will print till 9 only 
so for if you want uh, 10 to be included then you have to write here 11 and then it takes the third parameter that it takes its step then in which step it's going to print so i'll show you how it's work so i'll simply give i uh, start from 0 then print till 11 means i want to print till 10 but then i'll give the step 1 and when i'll print it you can see from 0 it's starting then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 till 10 is printing now if i'll i'll change this 0 to 1 then what will happen then it will start from 1 because i have changed the default value from 0 to 1 and then it will start from 1 and go still 10 now i can change the step also if i'll change this step to 2 you'll see that it is printing after 2 means 1 has been printed then 2 has been left then 3 has been printed then 4 has been left then 5 has been printed then 6 has been left then 7 then 8 has been left then 9 and 10 has not been printed so this was it for today for the control flow statements thank you for watching the video we'll see you in the next video